Hello everyone, this is Megan Cole from Homewood High School in Homewood, Alabama. Welcome back to AP Daily. Today we're going to look at two free response questions that have to do with Unit 4, the financial sector. Question 1. Assume that the economy of country alpha is operating at the full employment equilibrium. Part A. Using a correctly labeled graph of aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, and long-run aggregate supply, show the equilibrium, labeling the equilibrium price level as PL1 and the equilibrium output as Y1. Before we draw the graph, let's go back to the prompt. We're told that the country of alpha is operating at the full employment equilibrium. So another way of saying this is that its current output is equal to its potential output. So here is our aggregate supply and demand graph. And we've got PL1 and Y1 at the intersection of short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand. Our Y axis is labeled price level and the X axis is labeled real GDP. And then I'm showing a vertical long run aggregate supply curve at Y1. Because remember that current output Y1 needs to be equal to potential output which is at the long run aggregate supply curve. So all three curves intersect on my aggregate supply and demand graph. Part B, now assume the economy of country beta, a major trading partner of alpha enters a recession. On your graph from part A, show the effect of country beta's recession on each of the following in country alpha in the short run. Aggregate demand and explain. All right, we're told that country beta who trades with alpha, so they buy goods and services from each other, goes into a recession. What does this mean? Well, this means that the people in beta, high unemployment rate, GDP is down, not a lot of spending money, national income has fallen. So people in beta will buy fewer goods and services from country alpha. So in terms of aggregate demand, what we're looking at of the components of aggregate demand is we're looking at net exports. So net exports fall because beta is buying fewer exports from alpha due to their recession. So let's go ahead and draw that on the aggregate supply and demand graph. So we wanna show aggregate demand shifting to the left, 81 to 82. And then for our explain, Let's say that aggregate demand in alpha decreases because the recession in beta decreases the demand for alpha's products and alpha's export to beta will fall. The second part of B is to show what will happen to real output and price level labeled as Y2 and PL2. So for output, that's going to be on our X axis. Price level will be on the Y axis. So we're going to show that output falls from Y1 to Y2 on the x-axis and price level falls from PL1 to PL2 on the y-axis. Part C. The central bank of alpha wishes to offset the effect of beta's recession on alpha's real output. Assume the banking system in alpha has ample reserves. What monetary policy action should the central bank of alpha take? All right, so the central bank in alpha wants to counter the effects of beta's recession on alpha's output. Remember on the graph, we showed alpha's output falling from Y1 to Y2. So the central bank of alpha wants to increase output back to Y1. So we're asked about a monetary policy action that the central bank of alpha should take. We are told that the banking system in alpha has ample reserves. This is important because this tells you which monetary policy tools alpha can take that will be effective. So let's first talk about what general goal the central bank has. The central bank in alpha wants to increase output. How can they do that? They need to conduct expansionary monetary policy. This will lower interest rates. The goal, remember, is to increase aggregate demand. So if interest rates fall, then any interest-sensitive spending, such as consumption or investment, will increase. This will increase aggregate demand, which will increase output. But this isn't enough. We are asked about an action the Central Bank of Alpha can take. In an ample reserve system, your choices are to increase administered interest rates or decrease administered interest rates. So because the central bank wants to conduct expansionary policy, 
in an ample reserve framework, the central bank should lower administered interest rates. This will lower market interest rates and then increase aggregate demand. Part D, draw a correctly labeled graph of the reserve market for alpha and show the effect of the monetary policy action you identified in part C on the policy rate in the short run. So let's draw our reserve market and then recall in part C what action was taken. So let's start with the reserve market. So I have policy rate on the y-axis, quantity of reserves on the x-axis, a vertical supply of reserves curve, and then a demand for reserves curve that has a downward sloping portion and then two horizontal portions. Remember that when you draw the reserve market in an ample reserve system, the supply curve needs to intersect the demand curve on the lower horizontal portion or the low, lower horizontal bound. All right, recall from part C that we said the central bank should decrease administered interest rates. So let's show this on our graph. Both administered interest rates need to fall. This is on the two bounds. So we see the upper bound falling, that's the discount rate. And then the lower bound also moving down, that is the interest on reserve balances rate. Both bounds move down and this will decrease the equilibrium policy rate. And we need to show that on the y-axis. And we see that as PR1 to PR2. Question two, a drop in credit card fees causes people to use credit cards more often for transactions and demand less money. Part A, using a correctly labeled graph of the money market, show how the nominal interest rate will be affected. So let's start with our money market graph. A correctly labeled graph of the money market will show the nominal interest rate on the y-axis, quantity of money on the x-axis, a vertical money supply curve, and a downward sloping money demand curve. So that's a correct labeled graph. Now let's talk about the shift that will happen. We're told in the prompt that a drop in credit card fees causes people to demand less money. So they don't wanna hold as much money in their wallets because they're using credit cards more often. So this is going to affect the money demand curve. So because people demand less money, Money demand will shift to the left, and we are going to show this with shifting MD, money demand, to money demand one. And then we need to show what happens to the nominal interest rate. So on the y-axis, make sure that you have your dotted lines, and we have a decrease in the nominal interest rate from I to I1. Part B, given the interest rate change in part A, what will happen to bond prices in the short run? Recall in part A, you drew on your money market, you showed that the interest rate fell. So what you need to know about bond prices and interest rates is that they are inversely related. When the interest rate falls, bond prices rise. When interest rates rise, bond prices fall. This happens because in this case, when interest rates fall, that means existing bonds have a higher interest rate than current new bonds that are being issued. So existing bonds are worth more than the new bonds that are now being issued with these lower interest rates. But here, all you have to say is what happens to bond prices. Interest rates fall since there's an inverse relationship that means bond prices will increase. Part C. Given the interest rate change in part A, what will happen to the price level in the short run? And we need to explain. Recall again from part A that the interest rate fell. Now, how do I know what happens to price level? Well, thankfully we have a graph, aggregate supply and demand, where if we go there and we look at what curves shift because of the interest rate change, then we can make a conclusion about price level. So let's go to the graph that has price level, aggregate supply and demand. When interest rates fall, this lowers the cost of borrowing. This will increase in interest sensitive consumption and investment, which will increase aggregate demand. Now, I find it helpful to draw a graph. And so I encourage you to do the same, just sketch one out. You don't need the graph as part of this answer, but visualizing it will help you 
see what happens to price levels. So here's an aggregate supply and demand graph. We've said that the lower interest rate will increase aggregate demand. So aggregate demand will shift to the right. And then we see on the y-axis that price level has increased from PL1 to PL2. So the answer to this, what will happen to price level in the short run is that price level will rise because the fall in the interest rate increases interest sensitive spending, which increases aggregate demand. My suggestion to you when you're asked to explain is to use the language of the model. What I mean by this is that our explanation includes the shift of the curve in the aggregate supply and demand model. So think about what variable you're asked about Use that model in the explanation. Part D, assume the country's banking system has limited reserves. Identify an open market operation the central bank could use to keep the nominal interest rate constant at the level that existed before the drop in credit card fees. Explain. So we're told that the banking system has limited reserves. Again, this is important because this tells us what monetary policy tools are available to this central bank. Now, what we're told is that the central bank wants to keep the interest rate constant. And remember that the interest rate fell. So what does this mean? The central bank wants to increase the interest rate back to where it was. And we are asked to explain. So in part A, the interest rate fell. Now we need to identify an open market operation. Open market operations is when the central bank buys or sells bonds. This will change the money supply which will change interest rates. So we just have a choice. You need to, to decide should the central bank buy or sell. I'm going to pull up the original money market that you drew at the beginning of this question because I think it's helpful to visualize what's happening to the interest rate. Here was the in initial shift left and we see the interest rate fell. We need to get the interest rate back up. The way to do this is that the central bank can sell bonds Selling bonds will give commercial banks bonds and remove excess reserves from the banking system. This will decrease the money supply. So you see the money supply curve shifting to the left, and this will raise the interest rate back up to where it was. So the answer here is that the central bank should sell bonds to decrease the money supply and raise the interest rate back up to the original level. Thank you very much. See you next time.